Are we ready? All right. Okay, we're ready to roll. We're ready. Hi, my name is Tony Flores, and this is my informative speech on Pico de Gallo. Pico de Gallo, salsa fresca, salsa mexicana. These are all words that are given uh, to describe Pico de Gallo. Does anybody here know what Pico de Gallo actually means? Uh, Pico de Gallo uh, means a rooster's beak. And the reason why they call it that is because it's spicy and because uh, um, us Mexicans, we like to eat it out of a bowl. And when we eat it out of a bowl, if you look at the way my hands are formed, my thumb and my index finger are pressed together, which is basically forming the shape of a beak. And that's, it got its name. So um, today I'm going to teach you uh, how to make pico de gallo. Uh, first, I'm going to describe the ingredients that you use to make it. Second, I'm going to uh, uh, show you how to put it together. And third, I'm going to describe some variations of the recipe. Um, first, uh, you will need uh, several ingredients and you want to make sure these ingredients are uh, put together well because you, don't, uh, you want like a delicious concoction. You don't want some like subpar unfinished recipe. So first, what I'm going to use is diced onions. Second, diced tomatoes. Um, third will be uh, diced jalapeno Damn. Uh, and chopped cilantro and a juiced lime. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, um, next one, uh, I'm going to show you how to put these uh, together. Next one, sorry. Uh, so, okay, so what you're going to want to do is uh, first you take your diced onion and you're going to want to take a bowl of, uh, next one, ne uh, take a bowl of ice water and you're going to want to put your onions in the ice water and basically what this does is it's going to uh, mellow it out. It takes the bite away from it. Some people don't prefer like, you know, the real oniony taste and this will mellow it out a bit. Um, and next you're going to, um, so you put those in your bowl like this. And then next you're going to uh, take your diced tomatoes and you're going to go ahead and put that in the bowl as well. Third, you're going to take your uh, diced jalapeno. Now you can choose to have it seeded or unseeded. If you have it uh, seeded, you're going to make it a little bit more spicy. But if you take the seeds out, it'll, you know, you'll have a more mild salsa. So I prefer to keep the seeds in because I like hot salsa, not wimpy salsa. So, okay. And then next, what you're going to do is you're going to take your lime. And uh, my mom always says that a bitter lime can spoil an entire, uh, entire dish. And this is very true. So what I suggest is when you go grocery shopping and uh, you pick out your lime, what you're going to want to do is you want to find a lime that's not firm, not hard. And the way to tell is you grab your lime and you put it between your thumb and your fingers and you roll it around like this. Now, if it's soft all the way around, you know you're going to have yourself a good lime and it's not going to be bitter. It's going to be juicy in this. And uh, yeah, so... Once you get home and you're ready to cut up your lime, you know, and uh, squeeze it on your dish, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, take your lime, you're going to set it on the counter like this. And then you're going to take the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, palm, <laughs> and uh, you're going to uh, roll the lime around like this and um, around all the surface of it. And then basically what this does is it activates the juices. And then afterwards you cut the lime, you squeeze it over, um, uh, your pico de gallo, I'm not going to do it for you, but uh, okay, so you squeeze the lime in. You can either use half a lime or you can use a full lime. I like to use a full lime because I like it more limey, I guess. Um, so next what you're going to do is you're going to take your chopped cilantro. Now, uh, Sh Chef Jer uh, from RadaCutlery.com, he suggests that you use only leaves and no stems because if you use any bit of stems, it has this weird taste and it, it kind of messes up the dish. So basically, you uh, are just only going to use the leaves and uh, you're going to go ahead and add it to it like this. And the last piece is uh, you're going to take some kosher salt. And I wasn't sure if I could use this because it says for Passover, but I guess we're going to use it anyways. So basically what you do is you take some of the salt, just a couple pinches, and you just throw it, go ahead and throw it on your pico de gallo. Next, you take your uh, ground pepper. And I like fresh ground pepper. You know, I don't play around with that other stuff. I like the real good stuff. So basically, you're going to go ahead and uh, grind some pepper up on here real nice. After you've gotten that taken care of, you're going to, you know, go ahead and mix up your dish. Now, this doesn't look as good as I normally make it. I actually got a finished uh, version right here. It looks a lot better. But this one right here is, uh, is okay just for presentation purposes. So 
um, I showed you how to make this recipe. Um, uh, next, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to let your dish sit for 30 minutes to an hour. And basically what this does is it allows all the ingredients to meld. And uh, that um, it, it basically um, brings out the flavor of the uh, pico de gallo. So next, I'm going to show you uh, different variations of pico de gallo. A uh, very simple recipe, uh, basically all you do is you take a mango and if it smells sweet then, and it's soft, you know it's ripe. You, cut, you slice it, you dice it, you chuck it into your pico de gallo and uh, it's, it's kind of strange how just uh, one ingredient can basically um, change the texture and the taste of the pico de gallo. So you add some mango, boom, you got mango pico de gallo. Another one is uh, watermelon pico de gallo. It sounds good. Me personally, I'm not a big fan of it, but uh, my family likes it. Basically what you do is you take a seedless watermelon and you uh, slice it, you dice it, you throw it into your pico de gallo, you take uh, um, green, red and green bell pepper, you take the seeds out of the middle of it and you slice that, dice that, you throw it into your pico de gallo. I always recommend that you take uh, your lime after you put all your ingredients in, you take your lime and you squeeze it over it. Can basically, it just drips all over all the ingredients and all the juices fall to the bottom. And then when you go stir it back up again, it tosses real nice. So that's what I would do afterwards. And then I would put my salt and my pepper. Next, this is a, a spicy pico de gallo. And you can do this by uh, taking any one of your favorite chili peppers. You can take um, basically ghost pepper, you could take habanero, or you could take serrano pepper, and you just slice it, mince it up, throw it in your pico de gallo, and you're good, man. You got some spicy pico de gallo. So, um, a quote that I really like from uh, Lee Drummond, and uh, she's from Food uh, Magazine, uh, yeah, Food Network Magazine, and she says that in order to have like a really uh, a good proportionate uh, pico de gallo is you're going to want to use the same amount of onions, the same amount of cilantro, and the same amount of tomatoes. And this basically, uh, you stick with that, that's basically the foundation for your pico de gallo. And it turns out really great. So, pico de, uh, pico de gallo is fun. It's delicious, but it's also healthy for you. Um, it is a collaboration of vitamins and minerals and also has antiox antioxidants in it. And that's a fun fact for you guys. So, let's review what we learned today. I taught you how to make a uh, pico de gallo and um, I explained uh, the ingredients you were going to need to uh, make it. I explained how you're going to put the ingredients together in order to, um, uh, yeah, in order to make it. And then I explained different variations of the recipe. Um, so uh, pico de gallo is a very simple recipe and uh, basically it, it um, it can be used for any occasion, whether it's for, um, you know, you and your buddies, you get together and you want to watch the game and stuff. It's a real simple recipe or you're just having a taco night with your family. It's a great recipe. And uh, actually, personally, what I like is like maybe two, three, four or more Coronas. And that puts the final touch on it. So thank you very much. Thank you.